is said that humanity began when the first primitive man used his words to persuade, rather than a rock. Rhetoric started off as a tool to find the common good in Athens, around 400 BC. The Greeks had formed the beginnings of a democracy which allowed everyone to have an opinion. Around a forum they debated on wars, religion, and politics. One would argue they wanted to erect a temple for Athena, while another argued they should erect a temple for Apollo. Some would consistently win their debates, while others would continue to lose. What was the art of persuasion? Great philosophers and teachers like Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle studied these orators, and they soon realized there was an art to persuade the public's opinion to what you wanted. Aristotle realized the only way to get what you wanted in a democracy was learning how to say things well. The great minds of the time began to study the effectiveness of communicating and developed devices to engage their audience. To start a speech with gusto, they tried hypophora. turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the fifth victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied. As long as our body is heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the city. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity by signs stating for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. If you want to provide emphasis, use Epizookis. Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Aristotle believed that a successful writer composing an essay, a speech, a letter, or other text needed to understand that the dynamics of communicating relied on a trilateral relationship. The speaker needed to understand their subject to successfully connect to their audience. Each point of the triangle influences the others and all are influenced by the context of the communication. 
Each point of the triangle bears some responsibility for the success of the communication, and each point of the triangle corresponds with one of Aristotle's three appeals. One giant leap for mankind. 